Lord God, thank you so much for giving us this time together and bless us as we go about your word. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, yeah, I think, uh, Rick, you mentioned about, well, are we in Mark or are we in, still in Genesis? When we finish Genesis, we'll, I think I'd like to look at some of the parables, which I think would be kind of cool, because I kind of gave the, a framework for how we can look at parables on Sunday. And of course, if you weren't here on Sunday, you have no idea what it is. You know, so. But you, you know, so. Oh, it was, it was his fault that it was oh, messed up. Did you yeah. know that? Did you know that? What messed up? Oh it's yeah! Your fault that Dale and it was a uh, yeah. It was just a. Well, it, I'm always there to tell him. Go now, go yeah. Now. yeah, she was. She was gone. She was in another part of the building. Oh yeah. Dale. She was on the phone. Yeah, Dale. Dale, Dale I waited and, and then he came down. It was. Uh, it was. Oh, he gave it to Dale. Too. No, 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 no. I didn't want to embarrass yeah, him. I didn't want to embarrass him. That would be unfair. I was. I bet he was. I'll make sure nothing happens on Sunday. Yeah, I'll. Uh, yes, I will. That's like throwing raw meat in front of me when something like that happens. It's like raw meat. My eyes get real big when he comes down there like that. Oh, I'm ready. You need a little bell. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's good. It's good. Yeah, like the song ended abruptly. Uh huh. Yeah. Oh, I think this it's, stuff is all wired. It may still go on, but yeah. Yeah. It's good. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right. Uh, we're since since um, and I don't want to draw attention to anybody who's missed quite a few of these, but we need to review. Who would that be? The other, the, and that's how we call it. That's what we call it, the other John. <laughs> the, uh, so, but we talked, we've talked about God. Tell me about God real fast, real fast. All powerful, all powerful Two, all powerful two ways of thinking, or two ways that he's mentioned. Well, I was hoping it would go better than that. But, okay, that's good. Uh, yeah. My eyes got real big again. <laughs> all powerful and all... Knowing, loving. Loving, loving, good. Okay, uh, all right, so we, um, we, we did that. We talked about Adam and Eve. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we did. Uh, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Uh, okay, we did. We did Adam and Eve, and and they um, messed up. Uh, you know, they they decided to choose for themselves good and uh, what was right and wrong. No, shouldn't have taken the mosquitoes with you. That's true. That's true. But I understand mosquitoes are good. Well, they're God's creatures. He made one mistake. God's creatures. Yeah, say become extinct. God said, "Take charge of my zoo. I made these creatures for you, so He won't mind if we wipe out a species or two." Oh, I'm appearing here all, all night. No, that's Leonard Bern. That's Leonard Bernstein. Yes, yes. I don't think we can take credit for Yes, I. I am not going to to take credit for that. Anyway, uh, so we got Adam uh, and Steve, uh, Eve, uh, and they they did their thing uh, and got tossed out of the garden. Um, and they had two bouncing baby boys yes. named Cain and Abel. Yes. And what happened to Cain and Abel? Murder. Murder. One bad. Only one thing, yeah, and it, you know, the whole one mistake again, yeah, yeah. So, 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 what's that? So, on one mistake, one slip up, you know. And he was kind of giving grace for it. Yeah, he was. Well, Mark Kane. So, you know, fratricide. That's not good. Uh, but you know, you know, whatever. And and so we got Cain, and we looked at Noah. Yes. And what do we know about Noah? He built a big ark, big boat. Yeah, got got drunk and and naked. Yeah. Or naked. His sons came in, covered him. He got mad, cursed him. 
Curse, curse one. one son. Yeah, the one that said, you gotta look at yeah. Dad. <laughs> you, wanna see, you wanna see Dad over there? You know, I got a little booklet. I took a pictures. I you know, right here. First uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 yeah, took a while, yeah. took a while, and you had to do it yourself. Hopefully it wouldn't wake so, up with half yeah, which is which is really hard when you're doing this and you're having to do it with one hand. Um, the uh, but we we did so they covered him out. But interesting that you all focus on that and not the righteous man. But maybe that's kind of appropriate. Uh, so uh, Noah and and we talked about uh, Tower of Babel a little bit, although that doesn't have a character in it. Uh, it's got a bunch of characters in it. No, Melchizedek. Oh, Melchizedek! Melchizedek, the king of righteousness. I love that. Okay, I think, I think that's pretty cool too. All right, but that's in the Abraham, Abram story, because we looked at Abram slash Abraham. And tell me some stuff about Abram. What, what makes Abram, Abraham, such a cool dude? He was old, you know, for which, to which most of us can identify, you know, with the exception of joy. Um, what's that? Made four covenants. Made a whole bunch of covenants with God, right? Had a hot wife. Hot barren wife. Yeah, hot barren wife, you know, which which is okay. Well, what? Yes, he lied about her twice, which is kind of kind of interesting. Uh, but he got he got rich both times. Got rich and richer. Yes. Um, the uh, so we got we got that going on. What what so the what is the covenant? What's the covenant stuff? Listen to me. I'm gonna take care of you. Listen to me. I'm gonna take care of you. And what does the listen to me have to do with? Go where I tell you. To go. Okay, go. Okay, if you're gonna go where I tell you to go, therefore you need to be. No, not baptized yet. I mean, that's not that. No, I mean, this, well, I'm waiting for Chris. Chris is going to do that later. Chris is going to be focused on circumcision later. I'm jokes. I figured I'm going to add Well, I appreciate that. Um, the, um, yeah. Okay, so um, if, if Abram or Abraham needs to circumcise everything in sight and um, needs to go, what does God than require of Abraham. He kind of, when he makes a stop, he kind of sets up an altar, but that's not really the main point. But it's kind of like the first kind of spread the word. Okay, I'm, I'm not expressing it very well, and that's a, covenants have two two sides, right? Oh, yeah. If if Abra, if he wants, you know, okay, what, what am I what am I looking for over here? Yes, yeah, a give and take, right? And and God wants God wants to, He says go and expects him to go. He says uh, chop. He expects him to chop. Yes. You know he you know, that's what he says, right? Yes. And he expects it done. Therefore, what is he demanding of of Abraham? What is Abraham's part of the deed? Obedience. Obedience. That's it. Obedience and faith, right? I'm going to lead you to a place. You got to go. So he's looking on Abram, Abram, Abraham's side is obedience and faith, right? Depends on which of the traditions you kind of lean on. This goes through my mind with faith. Are both required or would only faith be Well, you know, that's, that's kind of interesting because when we look at the different strains, you know, traditions, uh, the, the covenant that involves circumcision is one of those God covenants. Where not the Lord covenants, so it's where God is called God, it's called El, uh, which is usually associated with a little bit later, later group, and it would seem to be when He tells Abraham to circ become circumcised and circumcise his family, that really doesn't involve faith. You know, Abraham doesn't have to have faith to to circumcise; he has to have obedience. You know, when when God says, "I'm going to lead you." to your land. That involves obedience, but it also involves faith. And, and that's what it's going to be called, you know, later by the same writer. And that's the Lord's stories. So we've got one strain that really focuses on faith, you know, Abraham believing. And the other that really focuses on obedience. 
And that's why when we saw the two, we had two stories about the a son being promised, you know, at, in an old age. And in one of the stories, Abraham, Abram laughs. And in the other story, Sarah laughs. And the one where Abraham laughs, or Abram laughs, laughing, that's laugh. When they laugh, hear the promise because they're, they're old. That, that seems to be the obedient strength, the God strength, the L strength. And, and you can laugh when, when, when God says you're going to have a son. And you say, that's not going to happen. You can, you can laugh and still be obedient. You can question and still be obedient. The, but can you question and still have faith? Well, no, because Sarah, so he takes in the other story, which is the Lord's story, both of them explaining why Isaac is named Isaac, which means laughter. You know, one Abraham's doing it, but that's okay because in that strain, he won't, God wants obedience. Abraham isn't going to laugh, but Sarah does in the other because Abraham is the example of faith. And therefore, a faithful person is not going to be laughing at a promise given by God. If God makes you a promise, you don't laugh, you what? Obey. Believe. You believe it, right? And so Sarah may be weak in faith, but that's okay. Abraham is going to be the example. Maybe you know, Abraham is going to be the example. He was married, so maybe that's all she laughed at. He's married, he's not going to cheat on her. Well, and, and that's, that's true. So Hugh, would, I think by putting those two together, those two traditions together instead of separating, I think the writer is saying, you got a faith and obedience. It's not sort of an either or. You know, you obey even if you don't trust. You know, that's kind of the, the faith is stepping into a dark room, you and know, I, believing I there's a floor. See, my thought was, if you have faith in everything that God says, you're going to obey. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah. With faith, you, you, obedience would follow. Um, yeah, but the, yes, uh, but that so yes, both both of them. I think that's what the writer is is conveying that both of them are necessary. What's that? That's great means trust. Right, right, right. Okay, so we've got we've got Abraham. So we've got this going on. We've got some bumps, hiccups along the way. You know, this little strange story about the kings and Melchizedek and stuff that the writer includes but doesn't really develop much. It's going to be developed later. Uh, what the, the business about Lot, you know, and his daughters and Sodom and Gomorrah and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you had lying twice, uh, Abraham, and then this business about the well we looked at last week, uh, Abimelech, uh, and, and, you know, dealing with who possesses this well. Uh, where's the promise going to flow? Abraham right now has two sons, right? What are the two sons? Who are the two sons? You got Isaac and Ishmael. You got Isaac and Ishmael. Isaac's mother is Sarah. Ishmael's mother is Hagar, the, the Egyptian slave. And God has said, I'm going to take care of Ishmael. My promise, though, is going to flow through is Isaac. So everything I have promised Abraham is going to go through Isaac. But that's tested, right? It's what? That's tested. And Abra Abraham has the opportunity to demonstrate whether he really trusts, believes, and is willing to obey. And what? how is... He tested. Okay, I'm gonna, I want you to take Isaac onto a mountain that I'll show you and offer him as a sacrifice to me. Okay? And the writer in great detail with some beautiful language imagery uh, describes this story uh, and what ends up happening. God, God stops him. He doesn't have to do it. But Abraham proves to be obedient. be obedient, faith slash faith. Okay, and what he does. Okay, so we we've, we've got that. We've got the boy Isaac here, ready to carry. Now, for Isaac to carry the promise, what does it, now? God has promised Abraham. What What are the two things that God has promised Abraham? 
He's promised him land, that this is going to be your land, and he's promised him lots of children, descendants. You know, and he's described the descendants as as numerous as the grains of sand on the beach, the stars in the sky. All right, so that's what the promise is. And we've got Abraham and one son because Ishmael is out of the picture now, right? So it's going to, all that's going to flow through Isaac, right? Therefore, for the promise to advance, what's going to have to happen to Isaac? He is going to have to get married and have kids, right? Because if he doesn't have kids, you know, promise is gone, right? So he's got to get married. And that's where we pick up right at the beginning of chapter 24. Because the writer tells us, what about Abraham? Very old. Okay, Abraham is very old. Now we already know who is gone. I, Ishmael is gone, the wife is gone. Sarah's gone. And we had that little story about Abraham and the Hittites. And what does he do with respect to the Hittites? He buys a cave. He buys a field with a cave. And what does he do with the field and the cave? He buries his wife there. Which I, which I said is kind of important because the, if, you, if you think of the promise God made to Abraham, all of this land is going to be yours and you're going to have more descendants than the, the grains of sand on a beach. Now, at this point he's got one descendant. And now he's got a plot of land. So, I mean, those two are kind of comparable to one another. You know, the beginning of the promise. You're going to have all the land, but now you've got this tiny, this little field in a cave. You're going to have all these descendants, but right now you've got what? And he's you've got now, right? He is old. He is old. Older. He is, yeah, yeah. He, we've already... She, she, she was 127. Yeah, oh. So he's 10 years old. Yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he, he has a lot of candles on his cake. Yes. A lot of candles on his cake. Yes. Yeah. In fact, the cake is mainly wax. Yes. Yes, which isn't very pleasant, you know, to eat. They're eating yeah. wax. But then this is ancient people, so they didn't know much they, better. You know, they ain't cake. They didn't um, all right, so um, they didn't have processed food yet. Um, all right, so what, what is right at the beginning, we've got... We've got Abraham's an old guy and he wants what? What do all old guys want? No, no, not girls. He wants his family taken care of. Yeah, he wants his family taken care of. Thank you very much, John Barnard. Yeah, he doesn't want young girls. We'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, we, he wants he wants his family taken care of, right? And for his family and the promise to be taken care of, Isaac needs to marry, therefore he wants a wife for, for Isaac. You know, and it's hard to get a wife for a guy named Laughter. You know, when I went, you know, when I would ask girls for dates, that's often what I heard. They were Isaacing to death, you know. So, when they weren't crying. Uh, Yes, well, that's, they were usually closing the door and laughing. Um, so, so you have, he, he wants a wife. So who does he call to get a wife for his son? Well, he doesn't go to God. A long time servant. He goes to a long time servant. can't remember his name. That's right. Well, the name, I don't even think the name is given for the servant. But the servant immediately does something that seems to be or Abraham asks him to do something that would seem to be rather odd. Yeah. What does he ask him to do? Put your hand no, thigh. put your hand under my thigh. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah, that would seem a little bit strange. Yeah. If an old guy, if an old guy said to you, Sandy, put your hand under my thigh, you would say, when hell freezes you know, you would say, no. <laughs> <laughs> you can't repeat it. All right, you would say go bowl. Uh, all right, so 
Now, what is being... Uh, that what, be so unusual if that's... Yes, that's what I was going to say. What, what is being described here? When he says, put your hand under my thigh and, and I'm going to make you sway. That was the they had of making pledges. That's right. You know, that's, you know we, we say in front of a court, put your hand on the Bible, you know, and swear or shake hands. You seal the deal by shaking hands. I mean, that's just what they did. That was, and we saw that before. There was evidently a coveting uh, tradition that involved cutting animals and, you know, separating them, that odd little thing when the covenant was made. So we're getting a glimpse into how things were conducted, business and promises were conducted. And evidently that was part of it. Probably part of it, uh, part of the custom when this was written to the people. Because they weren't, this wasn't educational. He was emphasizing the fact that the servant was making a solemn promise and that would make sense if they understood it as such. That binds the servant. Exactly, binding the servant to, to the master. And, and servant, you know, is, is a nebulous term because they're involuntary servants and, you know, so it'd be a lot like slave, but our view of slavery is different than that. So it's, it's, it's a little more complicated than that. But they're making a, they're making a, a covenant. And, and what does Abraham won, or he's forcing, not a covenant, but he's forcing his servant to pledge, to make a promise. Okay, no Canaanite chicks. What, let me ask you. I mean, they've been like kind of dogged on this whole time. <laughs> yeah, what is the problem with, with Canaanite chicks? And I'll, I'll tell you, my mother said the same thing to me. Don't bring home a Canaanite. And, and she Rick, said that to me. I can remember her doing that. Rick's world, that would be, that was and Rick's world journey, she found the Canaanites pretty nice. And it's his son. Well, yeah. yeah. His son. Be his son no. So he doesn't want to well, no, it gets no because it's it gets a little weirder. It's we got a, we got some West Virginia coming out later. You know, we got some West Virginia happening later. So it ain't that. Uh, what what? But yeah. From well, the, the Noah's Canaan. Yeah, that's right, Canaan. He's he's from Canaan, and remember, Canaan was 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 cursed by by Noah. So these the people of the land that surround him are people that carry this curse of Canaan. Okay, and and again, I think this is an elbow at the people of the land. Which is going to be important because after, after the Moses story, and understand the people who are reading this already know the Moses story and the, the Joshua story. What is God going to tell Joshua to do to the Canaanites? Kill them. Kill them, kill them, kill them. Who should they kill? The men, right? You kill the men. You kill the women. You kill the babies. You kill the animals. You kill every living thing. Wow. Why? Cleansing the land. You're cleansing the land. What's that? It was their worship. Oh, absolutely. That's what they're, they're cleansing the land. Yeah. 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 Sure. They, so what, it's a cleansing of the land. Well, you know? today, the Jewish religion is kind of the same way. They want you to marry a nice Jewish girl. Of course. Right. Uh, right. right. <laughs> which, which is really interesting because the line's going to follow the girl. And we'll get to that in a, a minute because we see that alluded to here. Uh, but that's what he's, that's don't marry this, anybody in this polluted people. And so it's a reminder in this story that we don't, you know, we still don't look at Canaanites in a, in a good way, even though we haven't really dealt with them since we looked at Noah. You know. It's kind of just taking for granted they're out there and they're not good. That they're, that they're, yeah. that they're just plain they're not good. Dead, that they're, they're, they're not dead. good. You know. Yeah. What's that? There's no more Canaanites because they're all dead. Well, the, the, what will become really interesting is when you look at the, like the Joshua story, he will say, kill all of them. Well, kill all of them? Kill all of them. 
every living. Well, okay. All right. In fact, somebody gets into trouble because he doesn't kill, you know, all the animals. He saves some of the animals. Uh, and they get in trouble. And they end up getting killed. But then when you start judges, in judges, judges gives right at the beginning all the people who are still staying in the land. You know, so they didn't kill everybody. Because in judges, again, different author, you know, you still got a bunch of people living in the land, which makes sense. You, you can't, you know, even ethnic, Hitler didn't kill all the Jews. You know, you just, you can't do it. You know, but, but, that's the, in, in the Joshua story, the land is pure, ready for God's people to settle. In judges, well, there are a lot of people still there. You know, which creates problems because the people who are still there are the farmers teaching the Jews how to farm. And one of the ways you farm is you start worshiping fertility gods. You know, that's what a good farmer does. So it becomes a problem that we see in Judges and into the books of Samuel and the Kings. Okay, but Joshua is working on his own, you know, kind of his own folk. Anyway, don't marry, I don't want you to marry a Canaanite. You know, the people of the land. Alright? So who should he marry? Where, where does Abraham want him to go, the servant to go, to get his son Isaac a wife? And this happens in every family. Where does he tell him to go? Huh? Go to your family. You know, go to members of your family. There might be a cute cousin. At a family reunion. They're always apart. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so, you know, go to your kindred. And, and find a wife there. John, I, I, I did hear that. Uh, yes. We, we, could, we could talk about that it's maybe true. later. Uh, the, uh, you, you've never been to a Rudiger family reunion. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly you haven't been. Uh, yes. That's... Uh, it's, uh, you know, like the DMV. <laughs> okay. So anyway, go marry, marry, find a, a wife for Isaac with your kindred. And where do the kindred live? Well, they live away. Because remember, Abraham, Abram came from a far place, Ur, and settled, which is in Mesopotamia, came and came to the land. So you go back to Ur and find Isaac a, a wife. And the servant says, you know, time, time out. What if she doesn't want to come? Well, what if she doesn't come? And he says, bring a lot of roses and have a ceremony where you give the one that you want a rose. No, no. That's the bachelor. Yeah, oh yeah, that's, that's it. Um, the... Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's where they got it. Uh, yeah, right there. He says, "If what if the woman doesn't want to come back? Okay, you know what? I might have to. No, you're not killing her. You know, you're not going to kill her. You because that would that would kind of discourage others. Uh, you know, uh, marry me or die. Uh, you know, you may have to. I may have to do what." If the girl, if the girl seems reluctant to to go with a strange servant that they have never seen in to marry a guy they have never seen in, you may need to do what? I may need to do what? I, Isaac may need to show up just to prove. Yeah, there is somebody. It's sort of like internet dating. You know, it'd be nice to, you know, for the person to show up. Yeah, to have a real life, you know, picture. So the picture they've got online wasn't done 20 years ago, you know, after he lost his, some of his hair. Um, the, okay, so he may have to, and Abraham says, when he says that, no way, Jose. I've got a question there. Yeah. That's kind of curious because... When, when the uh, royalty of Europe would get married, they would marry without ever seeing each other. Right. Well, this so, is, remember, this is a story. I know, but you would think 
the religious aspect of it would carry over in some way during that time. Okay, so what, it, by the writer shaping the story in this way, because, well, Abraham says what? When the servant says, I may have to bring Isaac with me. You know, he says, nope, he ain't going to go. Why, why is it now, because I think this little part of the story is all tied up with the promise. You know, why, why would Abraham say, no, I don't want Isaac going? What's that? You, okay, a, couple of, a whole bunch of things. One, you're going to get the one God wanted. Anyway, you know, so don't worry about that. It's going to, God's going to work it out. What would be some other reasons he doesn't want Isaac to go? He might love someone else. Then. Well, he may Canaan. fall in love with somebody else. Maybe you know, we'll you know, like the city, yeah, fall or, or the Canaan. He might, he might find a Canaanite. Might find a Canaanite? No, God took him from that land and he Yeah, what if Isaac goes to this land and says, man, there are more cute cousins than, I can, than you can <laughs> shake a stick at. You know, I want to stay around here. Yeah. Right? You know, and I don't want to leave. Well, what happens if on the journey something occurs and he dies? You know, all of this is going to do what? And the What's that? And, and the promise. The promise is going to be knocked out. And so, John, I think what this is doing, the way the writer has shaped it, is they, the writer wants us to focus back on the promise. That Abraham wants to keep Isaac in the land that was promised. That becomes really important. Less customs and, and other things. That's what he wants the reader to see. That Abraham wants his son to stay in the land. He made the journey. He doesn't want to go backwards. He doesn't want to go, doesn't take it backwards. Now, what's going to be interesting is when we look at the Jacob story, that's exactly what happens. Because Jacob goes back. You know, but we don't, we're not worried about Jacob. All right? So, Abraham says, no, you're not going to do this. Don't worry about it. If the woman is right, she's going to follow. And if you don't find anybody, if no woman is willing to go back with you, and why wouldn't she? I mean, ladies, my gosh, if a stranger came up and said, I got a guy, you know, back home that I think you'd be right for, come on a camel and go on a, you know, a two-month journey with me. You'd jump on that camel, wouldn't you? <laughs> if if no, well, yeah, yeah. If they yeah, when they the, he looked through your little booklet of pictures and said that's the one. That's the way you carried on in 1951. Well, if the servant took all the roses to her, she's not gonna fall in love with the servant. Might be, you know, which would create a whole problem. Would mess up the series. Yeah. All right. Yeah, an ugly servant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, maybe a hair lip. You know, really ugly. All right, so anyway, so he says, go, and, and if, if she doesn't come with you, then what? What's the deal? Forget the other. So you're, you're free. Okay? And so the servant says, okay, and he does what? Puts his hand underneath his Abraham's thigh, and... A promise is made. And you know, Presbyterians, we follow Scripture. From now on, this is the way we're going to make promises. <laughs> Hand, under Hand under the thigh. Okay? Hand under the thigh. I want to see your future son in law. What's that? Palm down. Palm down. Oh, palm down. <laughs> oh, that's. <laughs> Son-in-law. Yeah. Do that. Yes. Well, that's <laughs> only if you get this on Sunday. <laughs> well, I'm figuring that'll discourage him. <laughs> so come over here and sit down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where are you going? Let, yeah. Let me let me make you a promise. Uh, the um. Dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's gonna be. She'll take care of me until I'm dead. Uh, the um. All right. So what does the servant do? Okay, he takes a whole bunch of camels and he, a lot of what's that? A lot, of good stuff. a lot of good stuff. So he goes to the city of Nahor, right? Yes. And where does he stop? At the well. At the well, which is kind of like a gas station, you know, and in a way, because he stops, why does he stop at the well? 
He's got to water the camels, you know, and he's got to water himself. Probably needs to get his feet washed or to get the bathroom key, you know. So he's there. <laughs> yeah, well, they were much more open then yes. than they used to. Kind of makes me think of Foreman Field. Uh, the, um, and, okay, so he stops and, and um, he notices that women are coming. You know, this is the time women come and draw water from the well. And so, what, so evidently this well is like a chick magnet, but no Canaanite chicks. You know, so women are coming right and left to this well, and he says, what does a servant do? Pray. Says a little prayer. And what is the prayer? Yes, I want, you know, this looks like a good situation, right? So, uh, this is, a, if somebody gives me water, if somebody waters my camel, then this is the one. This is the that's one. Simple. What's that? That's simple, huh? Yeah, it's that simple. Yeah. See, that's, uh, if you just hang around wells. It's not that simple. It's, he's, he's saying words that she would have to say. Sure. And, and what and that he... Will, that will allow him to know that she is the right one. Right. So where is the focus? When he's praying this, where, is the fo where does the focus shift? This isn't just a servant looking for a wife. Where is the focus? Who's now in control of the situation? He says, Lord. Yeah, Lord, that's right. Master Abraham. That's right. So he's appealing to God on behalf of his master. Absolutely. That's his master's God. Right. And, and again, we've got this Lord tradition, those four letters, okay? And, and so we've got, it's, it's in God's hands, right? Because that's what the servant has done. You know, say, God, you direct. You were, you were in control of this situation, right? You will show me, and you're going to show me through something like you said, is really detailed. It's not a matter of, if I see somebody getting water, that's the one. You know, but it's got to be more than that. Going to give me water. Going to offer to water my camels. Going to say certain things. Well, basically, he chooses. Yes, yes, absolutely. It was whenever I say this to a certain one, mm -hmm. if her answer is such, it'll be the right one. Right, right. So when he but and and if this is in God's hands, then how verse fifteen starts is fairly important. If the servant has put this in God's hands, this is, you're, you're in control of this, right? What happens in the verse 15? What does it say right at the beginning? Before he has even finished his prayer, who shows up? Okay, Rebecca shows up. Okay? And she is, she is beautiful, she's a relative, a kinswoman, and she's a she's a virgin. Okay. Now, why would why would that virginity be really important? Because she wasn't a virgin. Well, why would why would that be important enough to mention? Because Isaac has to have children. Ah. He's going to have it through her. She can't be blemished. Exactly. You know, there can't be any question about lineage. You know, because if she wasn't and she was pregnant at the time, you know, that messes things up. You know, Does that sound like Joseph and Mary? Well, it, you know, in, in the ancient world, you can, you can trace lineage through women. Okay. It is much more difficult to trace it through men. Yeah, you know, it, it really is hard. Uh, but women is, is much easier because you know... What she did. You know, Maggie is Debbie's daughter. I mean, that's pretty clear. Now, I am 99% sure she's my daughter, but, you know, you, can you be, you know, well, you know, with DNA testing and stuff, you can't. But yeah, they didn't weren't doing that back then. 
It makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense that the lineage follows follows the woman. Okay, so she's got to be she's got to be pure. There can't be any possibility that a son that she bears could be the son of somebody else. Because then it doesn't carry the promise. And she's beautiful. She went to the spring. She fills up the water. Uh, what happens? She lets the camels drink. She well, first she says, the servant says, give me, a sip. give me a sip of water, which is, you know, step one. Mm-hmm. She and, she and she does. And then she, the I will draw water for the camels. Okay, she offered that herself. So what is happening based on what we, the reader, know? What the writer has given us as the reader? What has occurred? God answered God answered prayer. Yeah, exactly what the servant asked her to do. Exactly. This isn't a coincidence. God has answered prayer, right? The prayer of the servant. So God is in control of this situation. Okay, so she, she waters... And uh, the, the servant knows, right? The writer tells us that the servant knows what's happened, right? Because how does the servant respond? Well, he's kind of gave her this. Uh, well, he gave her the, the jewelry. Yeah. yeah. He knows. Yes. Now, he gives her the, uh, the jewelry, a nose ring of half a shekel. And you understand half a shekel is about 25 pounds. So, you know, she was kind of, yeah, she was kind of stooped. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, half a shekel isn't, isn't that. I made that up. Uh, but he gives her all this stuff, right? Yes. And, and uh, he asks her, because he doesn't know her lineage, but who knows her lineage? She does. Who else knows her lineage? 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 You're right. All of you will say, all right. Who else knows her lineage? What? Who else knows her lineage? Who else knows her lineage? We do. We do. We know her lineage. So when the servant asks, you know, about it, and she tells him, he finds out something that we already know. That's why I keep on telling you, you're not supposed to be in the story. You're kind of hovering above it, looking down on it. Because you know things the people in the story don't know. You know, yeah, you don't know. One, uh, I mean, he's silent watching her, and then he wondered whether uh, God made his trip. Yeah, exactly. Because, because... All this is happening? That's right. We already know yeah. that when, when Rebecca, who is exactly who Abraham wants his son Isaac to marry. Exactly. She fulfills all those little tests that the servant has put in his prayer. But the servant isn't sure whether it's successful yet because if she were a Canaanite that just wandered out there, then this isn't successful. But we know it's going to be successful. Okay? So the servant is determining the lineage. The, the, she gives the lineage now the servant knows what? This is, it. This, is, this is it. This is it. Okay? And that's why the servant does what? Gives it to Well, I've already given her that stuff. She no. asked yeah. if uh, they have accommodations. Well, accommodations, sure, of the place to stay. What happens in verse 26? What kind of dump is it that she's going to get? Uh, okay, we have straw for you. Well, I mean, he, the servant does what? He bows his head and worships the Lord. Because right there the servant knows that this is it. That this is, that this is it, right? Okay. And, and Rebecca does what? Runs home. Runs home. Yeah, she gets, he gets the best accommodation. Straw. Some straw. That's the best. That's the best. That's poor people. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah. Well, remember, she's lugging around a 25-pound nose ring, which isn't very pleasant either. All right? So, she gets home, and who is there waiting for her? God. Nope. Big brother. 
And Big Brother's name is Laban. Now, Laban's going to be important later. Laban later. Later Laban. Uh, he's going to play a role in, a, in another story that's going to be related to these folks. And we start getting a sense of his character here. And the writer, again, we're talking about a good writer, you know, who has very limited space, therefore has to tell, make his point with just a few words. He doesn't have five or six pages to, to you know, explain Laban's character. He's got to do it with economy, right? And so Laban is there, and the writer tells us something about Laban right here immediately tells us something about Laban that's important to know about Laban. When Rebecca runs in to the house and Laban is there, what does Laban immediately say? All the jewelry. All the jewelry. So he's a crook. Well, we certainly now are wondering, you know, his sister runs into the room. It doesn't say he saw the joy on her face. He saw excitement. You know, it doesn't, the writer doesn't say that. The first thing he saw was that jewel, that nose ring. Okay, he sees the jewelry, which kind of suggests that if Laban's not a thief, and we don't know he is yet, he certainly has... A assessing eye. Yes. He, he has a definite sense of value. He's a good detective. Yes, yes. And so what does he do, and what does he say? yeah, 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 come on over, we'll give him straw, wash his feet, we'll have food set before him. Okay. Uh, and even, even in that you say, well, you know, it seems okay, but the, how does the servant respond to Laban's offer? Not going to do it. Yeah, not to, which, which kind of, you know, puts Laban's offer not in a bad light, because him seeing the jewelry isn't bad. Him making this offer and the servant saying, no, not until I finish my job, isn't bad, but certainly not in the appropriate string. You know, the Laban doesn't seem to get it. Or his, he's working from a different agenda. Slightly. And we're going to see his, the agenda he's working from in just a little bit. And then what does the servant say to him? As Laban says, oh, share your story. And what does the servant do? Tells, Tells it. Yeah, the servant talks, right? And and what? So what does at the end? What does the servant want to know? What's what does he want to know? How much are you get for this? Well, what is it? Well, in a sense, he says, "Are you going to? Are you going to be straight with?" You know, are you going to uh, uh, are you going to treat me right? Knowing this whole story, you know, are you going to be honest with me? Now, remember, we're talking about kinsmen. We're not talking about people who are foreigners or strangers. We're talking about people that are we would assume kinsmen. That there's not that they necessarily met were buddies, but there's some familial relationship. How does Laban respond? Okay, here we go. We can't talk. We can't. He says here we can't speak. Uh, we cannot speak to you bad or good because it's from, this thing comes from the Lord. Okay. So, so take, take her. Go. go, just as the Lord has spoken. Now, it's uh, what are the, what appears? What do they appear to be recognizing? Okay, got the gods. God's in control. Okay. Communicating that to the reader. How does the servant respond? Uh, he won't eat until he tells Won't eat until he, he's finished it. As soon as Laban says, you know, this is from the Lord, go. You know, take her for your master's son. And the servant again does what? Bows his head to the ground before the Lord and maybe makes an error. Because what does he do after he bows and worships God? 
brought out more jewelry. He brought out more jewelry, more gold, more silver, more garments. And he gives it to Rebekah, and he also gives it to the brother, to Laban, and to her mother. Okay? So, all of them are getting all this stuff that the servant brought. Now, what happens the next day? Well, yeah. Uh, they want to put him on a little trial. Yeah. Um, what happened to dow dowries? They didn't do that at all. Women didn't. They didn't have to give anything for their wife, their daughter, to the groom. Well, in in this, it is a, such a wonderful wonderful thing because they want her to go with them. Yeah, there's no sense of dowry here. That there's a dowry. That, that, that they're giving a dowry. When that change? But, but it may not fit into the story. Because the story is that, that Abraham is doing this to get a wife for his, his son. Probably then, the dowry hadn't been established. Yeah, that was, that was during the happy days. With, yes, no dowry and, and, and stuff. You, you, just, you just did what, you bought yourself a wife. You brought, you brought stuff and bought a wife. Yeah, well, you know, that's the way it goes. All right, the, um, what's that? Don't you do that today? No, you don't. Have to. We just don't call them wives. Yeah, yeah you that's right. <laughs> what did he say? You, you call them. You still buy them today, you just don't call them call wives. Them, oh. Call them dancers. The, um, all right, so you've got, you've got the next day, ate and drank, and then Laban wants to amend the deed. Yes, yes. Keep pretending we're Okay. And, and he said, you know, let's, he says, let's go. We got to hit the road, you know, sort of like when my dad was going on traps. You know, we got to go, got to go, you know. Yes, that's right. Doesn't matter if you're miserable. Get in that car, you know, after, you know, my brother's crying, my sister's pouting. You know, that's okay. You know, we're going to have fun, fun, fun. Are we there yet? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and that's when we start. You know, shoving one another in the back seat of the like the fair lane. Right, uh, like van. Yeah, yeah. All right. So he's doing, and and both Laban and the and Rebecca's mother says, "Well, let the girl remain for ten days, and and then we'll let her go." Now, knowing that Laban is seems to be very interested in and the first thing he noticed was gold and jewelry and such. What sense do we have is she going to be hidden off in 10 days? The servant's going to go off 10 days and 10 days later we'll send her because you know uh, a girl with this with this group, this caravan, a girl in a caravan is much more threatened than a girl all by herself in the desert. So we'll let her go ten days later. Do we get a sense that Laban's going to do that? Probably not. Well, when the yeah, when the servant comes back, Laban says, "Oh, by the way." Um, Sort of like uh, uh, Zeke Elliot, you know, is making a new contract with the Cowboys. You know, Laban wants to make a new contract with the servant, and she can go, but it's going to cost you more shekels. Yes. Yeah. Did Zeke make it? Uh, Zeke hasn't yet. Not yet. Yeah, not yet. Um, they shouldn't. Yeah. You sign the contract. It's not up yet. So anyway, how does the servant respond? Nope. Nope. God said, uh, get, "God said, get on your way." Okay. And and what do what do Laban and his mother? Because it's both of them. What do they say? We'll ask the girl. We'll ask the girl. And what does the girl say? They ask the girl, and what do the girl say? Oh, I will follow you. Yeah, oh, that's... <laughs> be better than here with <laughs> yeah, and mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so she says, she says, go. And 
uh, they bless her, right? And um, she goes. She mounts the camel and goes. Okay? Now I found this interesting when they said they bless her. Uh huh. Because there, there, I read this where it says, may you, may you, our sister, become the mother of thousands, ten thousand, and may, may your descendants possess the city gates of those who hate them. I mean, this is uh, more than just have a good time. And right, it. right, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, In fact, what are they doing when they say that? They're blessing the earth, and they're like fulfilling upon the covenants that the. God has made with, in this case, the Abraham, Absolutely. The Absolutely. But they seem to understand or they, learn to fulfill that. They sure do. You know, so it, this, this would reinforce the idea that all of this is... Tied together through God. All of it's tied together through God. This is all God's will. Even a brother. You know, the fact that a brother doesn't hold, prevent her from leaving. But not only lets her go, but blesses her, that God is involved in all of this. You know, that God's hand is here. That this isn't just random or lucky or happenstance. This is, this is God. And, and, you know, even stories where God, at least when we look at, at Genesis, well, even throughout the old, old, old Testament and New Testament, even when God isn't mentioned, you, you work with the assumption that God is behind the scenes. That God is working behind the scenes. And there's a book in the Bible, in the Old Testament, in which the name, the word for God, or the name for God, is not mentioned. There's a whole book in the Old Testament that doesn't mention, that doesn't have the word God in it. Whole book in the Old Testament. They don't even say they were blessed. Don't have, no. Nope. That doesn't have doesn't have anything divine in it. It's Book of Esther, which is a is a story about a queen that saves, you know, her people. As you read it, though, even though the word God is not in it, the assumption is, or the belief is, God's behind the scenes. God is is working behind the scenes. Is is Man, involved. Win the, the fight. Yeah, that this is this isn't just coincidence yeah. or luck. That God is involved in this. Of course, that's a later. It's a later writing. You know, by the language. You know, Esther is a later book, and as you get to the later books, God becomes more and more detached. Is it Esther? Esther. Esther. The book of Esther. Okay. All right. So we've got they they take off. Who enters the picture in verse sixty-two? Isaac. Isaac. Now, and we really hasn't, you know, Isaac hasn't been involved in this, right? We haven't seen Isaac since he was on the mountain, right? Okay. Now, Isaac though is still important in this story, right? Because Rebecca's heading towards him, right? But. He's never seen Rebecca, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So Isaac could put a kibosh in this, right? Because yeah. yeah. Isaac could say, nope. I ain't marrying her. You know, I ain't doing that. Your feet were too big. Yeah. Your feet's too big. Yeah, that's right. He doesn't know anything um, about Doesn't know anything. So, well, it seems as though he's got an inkling. That's why he's there. But doesn't know her at all. Yeah. Uh, Isaac goes walking in the field and what does he say? Again, just, just pause and, and, and admire for just a second the skill the writer is doing. He's doing the same thing that he did on the mountain. You know, the Abra Abraham took the knife in his hand and you know, th this, is dramatic, this is dramatic writing done at a time when you had to be careful about the words you use. This guy is good. He's drawing, a, creating a romantic scene because Isaac is in a field and what does he see? The camels. He sees camels coming in the distance. It's like, you know, that, uh, that scene in Lawrence of Arabia. You know, where you're looking at the desert and you see in, in a distance. And, and while that's happening, Rebecca looks up. Yeah. And what does she see? 
She feeds Isaac. And what does she do? Okay, she gets down from the camel and says to the servant, well, who is that guy walking to meet us? You know, that good looking fella. You know? And the servant said, it, it's, it's my master. And she takes a veil and covers her face. Right? And the servant told Isaac what he had done and Isaac brought her to her mother's tent. Now, this gets kind of confusing because he's bringing her to his mother's tent, but we got a problem here. His mother's dead, which means what? They're going to be stuff. What's that? They still got her stuff. Still, well, still got her stuff. What else, does it, what else might it mean? What's the most reasonable, what's the most likely answer? That's where she's going to sleep. Yeah. What what would be if he's taking her to his mother's the mother's tent? It would appear as though his mother's still alive, which means the story is a different story. Out of place is out of place. You know, is out of place. You know that that you know the the ordering may be a little little bit. Yeah. Or they could still have the mother's tent there. Could, could, could still have the mother's as, tent there. As a tribute. Yeah, it could be. They mentioned something here that said it was covered, uh, at least in this version, either it was covered after his mother's death. Yeah. So, I don't know what, I don't know what tradition is there when a major ever dies. Yeah, it, it sure would appear as though the mother's tent was, the mother was alive, and then she died, and Isaac had to be comforted. Which just means the story is a little out of place. We're not worried about that. That's we're, we're not worried about that. You know, because these are just these are just stories that are being combined into a narrative. You know, so we're not we're not gonna gonna freak at that kind of thing. Uh, be, we know though that he has gotten married, right? Okay. So everything that his Abraham wanted has taken place. You know, whether she died earlier or whether she died later, Sarah's now gone. Isaac has a wife. Abraham is really old, right? And, and so he is ready to hang it up, right? No, not really. What does Abraham do? By gum, he takes another wife. Um, not unlike my grandfather when he was in his 90s and he started dating a woman who was younger than my father uh, yes indeed um, who was interested in him not in his money yes she was in his four she was in her 40s he was in his 90s it was it, it was it was awful it was it was it was uh, well, my my grandfather was an in, is an interesting was an interesting person. This understand they started dating while my grandmother was still alive uh, in a nursing home. Uh, yeah, so my father wasn't happy by the the situation, uh, nor was he happy when. <laughs> oh, my grandfather! Oh, he was a mess. She, she, oh, he ordered Viagra. Uh, yeah. They, they would watch movies, artistic movies together, uh, and sort of as the cherry on top of the Sunday, my my grandfather and it and it really upset my uncle, my dad, because my dad, I mean, this is my grandfather. He, he is one of the few men that has, has ever taken a date to his wife's funeral. Uh, my grandfather was class with a capital K. He wasn't uh, pregnant too? No, 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 no. Probably took a week to wipe the smile off. Oh, jeez. Uh, the, what she didn't know was my grandfather, she thought she'd get his money. My grandfather wasn't giving his money to anybody. <laughs> my grandfather was, if there was one thing he loved more than women, it was money. And there was no way she was going to get his hand, her hands on any of his money. 
They were playing one another. It was fascinating. Yeah, they, they were playing one another. My grand, he was a, he, um, and just as a side, this is how much he, he was focused on money. Uh, and he had, I mean, he had millions. He had a ton of money. Um, he felt it was too expensive to get those, those alert <laughs> buttons you wear, you know, the, uh, and so what he did at his, at his house, and, and he did this, uh, he had a guy come and suspend ropes from the ceiling. Well, at least this is what he did. Now thinking about the woman, maybe it was something else going on. But ropes from the <laughs> ceiling. So if he ever fell down, he could climb up the rope and, and stand back up because that would be cheaper than getting the, the little life button. Wow. Yeah. Maybe he just used the ropes there. I don't want to know what he used the ropes for. I, now I, I don't. I was going to keep it clean. Okay, good. I appreciate that. That was my grandfather, Rudiger. Wow. Did he die of a heart attack? <laughs> I don't know, Chris. Uh, no, they, they had broke up long before. When she found out, when she found out she was not getting any money. No money. She, yeah, she moved on. And my father became, he, he well, my grandfather was an interesting. I did it. Yeah, yeah, He's colorful. Yeah, he was colorful. The Rudiger's a colorful bunch. Uh, all right, so Abram, Abraham, though, is what they called in the Old Testament a player. Yeah. And, and he got married, mm -hmm. and not only did he get married, man, he had kids, yeah. and, and a bunch of kids, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but these kids, you talk about your second family never, never measuring up. You know, these guys, they're like afterthoughts. You know, we, they don't show up in the story at all. You know, they're just there. You know, um, so uh, he, he has these kids. They're associated with tribes, uh, but they really don't play a, a crucial role in the story. They're, these are going to be tribes so that will be associated with Arabs later, you, you know, know, in that area. It's still, though, it's, it's part of that, hey, you know, you, you can't fill a nation with everybody who's going to be a main player. If you're going to build nations, you need, you need people. So you, that's you right. Go. And, and you're going to have people that are going to be rivals. And, yeah. you know, and that's sort of what's esta being established here. Again, the kid comes up to his father. Dad, where did X tribe come from? Well, let me tell you, son. You know, why are they so successful? Well, let me tell you, son. They were children of Abraham, too. Okay, but who's going to get the land? Isaac, 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 Isaac. What happens to Abraham? 175, he breathes his last, right? And who buries him? Isaac and Ishmael. Yeah. Ishmael shows up. So these half brothers uh, bury, but not the end, doesn't mention the other, other kids. Uh, bury, yeah, because they're just, you know. Uh, end up burying, where do they bury him? In the cave. In the same cave where Sarah is buried. Okay. Now, what? His wife buried the first wife. Well, his first wife is buried in this cave. He's buried with his wife in oh, this field. His, oh, his first wife. His second wife, don't know. Don't know. No one there. Yeah, I mean, she just disappears. Okay. So, what's that? Don't hear from her again. Uh, but it, well, remember, who is, who's going to carry the promise? Isaac is. But remember, God also made a promise to Ishmael, right? So Ishmael's going to carry the promise. God, Isaac's going to carry the, the covenant. But the uh, promise is still being carried by, by Ishmael. Now, before he dies, uh, or after the death, what does God do? He blesses, he blesses Isaac, yes. right? Yes. All right. And, and what is given in, and again, God, because we're not talking about the Lord tradition, we're talking about the God tradition. Immediately, what do we have in verse 12? 
Okay. He's got a whole bunch of descendants of, of Ishmael. Now, how many sons does Ishmael have? Nope. Nope. None. No. He has 12 sons. Why is that? Why, is, why does that become important? Well, 12 is an important number because you're going to have 12 tribes of Israel. Later, uh, Isaac's son is going to be the father of 12 tribes. Remember when God made the promise to Hagar about Ishmael, part of the promise was that Ishmael would be the father of, of 12 princes or, or kingdoms that are going to make up a great nation. And so here, what God has promised is being fulfilled. Is being fulfilled. Okay, so God fulfills his promise. What's that? What's happened with the whole situation? Absolutely, God's involved in the whole thing. Now, now that we end chapter 25, what is our situation? What's our situation when we end chapter 25? Okay, we got Israel, we got, we got this beginning. Okay, because we've got what? What, what have we got set up? Okay, we got the marriage of Isaac and married to a, not some of that Canaanite trash, married to a, a good, good woman, all right, a good kinsman, a kinswoman, a cousin. Uh, so we got, we got that going. And she was fertile. She, uh, well, we don't know that yet. We don't know that yet. I just threw that in. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate that. <laughs> What's that? because she had Well, we we would we would we might want to assume that that uh, You're gonna that she. But at this point, we are set up. Abraham, the story. If we were going from chapters, if this was a book with chapters, this ends Abraham's story. The curtain comes down on Abraham, right? He is gone. Now we move into Isaac. But you know, the Isaac story is going to be very short. You know, we, we, we're not going to do much with the Isaac story. Because next week when we look at, we look at Isaac, we're going to immediately, almost, almost immediately jump into Isaac's sons. There's not going to be a lot dealing with Isaac. It's going to be now that he's going to lie about Rebecca. Like father, like son, you know, same situation. Going to lie about her to another king, um, and there's going to be a thing about wells again because wells are a big deal. But outside of that, there's not going to be a lot about Isaac. There will be a lot about the two boys, and the two boys are going to be Jacob and Esau. And that's what we're going to look at next week. Next week, we're going to look at the rest of chapter 25 beginning at verse 19, and we're going to take it right to the beginning of chapter 28. So we're going to look at the Isaac, we're going to look at the uh, Jacob and Esau stories. Okay? And as you read it, just as you look at the story, just, look, just read them. Don't, don't try to spiritualize them. Because the, the, I don't think the writer wants us to do that. There are some people in the stories that aren't, don't display a lot of what one might call righteous behavior. Oh, really? Yeah. In fact, one of them, remember, names seem to represent stuff. You know, like Isaac's name, Abra Abraham's name was, or Abram's name was father. And then Abraham was plural, father of many. You know, Isaac's name meant... Laughter or, or joy. Uh, Esau's name is going to refer to red. red. That's the red. Because, no, he's going to be a red, hairy thing. That's what he's going to be. He's going to be covered with red hair. Yeah, no, he's going to be. But Jacob, Jacob's name is going to mean. Well, uh, well, supplanter, uh, 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 liar, cheat, that's what Jacob means. 
when he's born, he's going to be holding on to his brother's heel. And that's kind of what the name means, but in a derogatory sense, you know, heel. Jacob is going to be what you'd call a piece of work. What about Jacob's ladder? Is that him? Jacob's, oh, Jacob's ladder is going to be in, not in the story we look at next week, but Jacob's ladder is going to appear a little bit later. And that's going to be Jacob, yeah. That's when he sees the messengers of God, the, the Malachi, going up and down the ladder. Yeah. Yes? I said, you sure it's not, his name's not Paul. <laughs> Could be. Can't hear you over here. I said, are you sure his name's not Paul? Yeah. That's her ex husband. Paul. Yeah. Yeah, so it's. Uh, yeah. He is now. <laughs> yeah, he's a. Uh, he's he's uh, a lot of work. Too. Yeah, he's a. Uh, we he's call uh, him a train wreck. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that's yeah, he's a. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's kind of a mess. Uh, but Jacob got better as he got older. Yeah. Yeah. Paul is. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Please. Please do. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna go from twenty five nineteen, which is where we stopped in twenty five, and we're gonna go through twenty eight nine, twenty eight nine. So we're gonna cover a fair amount of material, only because we got to get. You know, there's so little about the Isaac story, and and we want to be getting into Jacob and Esau because I'll, the Jacob story is going to be a long one. Oh. There's going to be a lot on Jacob and a lot on one of his sons named Joseph. Oh, okay. Named Joseph. So, yeah. is, he the, is he the Joseph? Which Joseph? Is he the one? Is he the one with Jesus? Yeah. No. He is going to be the J Joseph in the amazing Technicolor dream coat. Uh, that's what he's going to be. The Joseph in the coat of many colors. Yes. Yes. Which is also going to be a great story. That's going to be a beautiful, wonderful, wonderful story. Okay, let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you so much for giving us this time together. And uh, remind us that even if his name isn't mentioned, God is always involved. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Amen.